Welcome back to Switched to Linux. So today we are going to have a look at the Manjaro computer. I did take the time today to get this set up. And uh, we are going to have a look at um, what I did with it and uh, just kind of initial thoughts. Um, first, I want to say Kitty says hello. Hello, peoples. Um, make sure he gets gets his airtime, you know. It's, it's in contract. He gets an airtime and some temptations every video. Uh, but anyway, uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you the uh, Manjaro budgie setup, uh, what I've done, and... Uh, we will walk through um, what I've set up, how I've set it up, and uh, see what we can go from here. All right, so here we are on the desktop. Um, of course, uh, Budgie is kind of based on uh, on the GNOME uh, platform, and uh, uh, so far I think I like it slightly better. It's still not my favorite, um, but we're gonna run with this, and hopefully I can have a little bit better um, a little bit better time than I did on the Ubuntu. Um, I've encountered a couple issues. I, I still cannot get Skype working. Um, I had the older version of Skype for Linux and that initially logged in but then stopped being able to log in. I'm not sure why. I think it was trying to, there's something in it that kept on trying to force lowercase letters in the Skype username and Skype usernames are case sensitive. And so for whatever reason, I could not get it to work. Um, and then I tried the, the latest, which is the version 8, uh, which came from Unicorn Land, I think. And that simply won't work. Um, and then I just tried to install version 5, which is supposed to be an 8 fallback, but it does not even appear in my menus anywhere. So um, I'll eventually get onto that and uh, start working towards that. Um, of course, what you can see here... Um, I have installed a lot of software that I wanted. I think I pretty much have everything installed that I'm going to need for the next couple months except for Skype. And um, one of the things that uh, gives me an advantage over GNOME is that uh, I can actually do other things with the panel other than one panel at the top that I can't do anything with. Um, so I can actually get in here and adjust my budgie settings. And uh, using your budgie settings, you can add various panels. Now, somebody said, you know, if I wanted to add a dock, I don't need to add anything extra like the Cairo dock. I can just create a new panel, uh, you know, put it up on the top, and you can go over here and come down and turn it on to dock mode. Uh, the problem is, and the reason I'm not doing that, let me actually show you the, the problem I have with that. So now we'll go into the top dock. We're going to add in some, some things. And let's just go ahead and add the icon tax, uh, task list. So here we basically have the same icon task list that I have down here next to the menu, which I'm probably going to get rid of uh, as soon as we are done. The problem with these is, as I have always said to people, and, and, and it's, I mean, it's a philosophy, but for whatever reason, I have no idea why it's causing more fights than it should. It's like, guys, this is a subjective matter. So what I'm going to tell you is my opinion on this. You may differ, but stop saying this is better. No, it's not. Because when I get neck deep in development, I will have four different windows of Firefox open and each window will have multiple tabs. I'm going to have two or three different folders open and I'm going to be jumping back and forth between a bunch of different items. So using their dock method, let me show you the problem. First, here's a Firefox instance. Okay, so now we have a Firefox instance and, uh, oh, come on, stop doing that. Let me uh, see if I can, can I put this on top? Always oh, on top. There we go. All right, so now here's a Firefox instance. And if I want another one, clicking it again minimizes the thing, okay? What I need to do is right click and create a new window. Uh, you might be able to middle click to get a new one open. Yeah, it looks like, you, uh, nope, middle click doesn't work either, either here. So here I can get new windows. Now, the first problem is you'll see on your dock that each new instance loads up a new one. This behaves not as a quick launch bar, which was the old XP version, but pinning to the taskbar, which was introduced, I think, either Vista, definitely by 7, but I think Vista introduced pinning. There's a radical difference between pinning to a taskbar and a quick launch bar. The difference is if I need multiple instances, it's an extra few steps to get the thing going. Yes, I know you can middle click, 
but half of my computers do not have a middle click button because I'm using very small customized mice for a lot of things, particularly for my mobile and my writing computers. Also, where's your middle click button on a, uh, on a uh, touchpad? Okay, so you have that issue going. The second thing is it adds extra steps. Next, each instance that I want is giving me yet another one of these tabs, but I can't see what is on each one of these tabs. So for example, if I go this tab, let's put this tab on Google, and let's put this tab on um, my main website. And let's see, we have, let's see, so I have three different instances going. <clears throat> what I can see down here and at the bottom is I can very quickly jump back and forth between each one of these. Your other alternative is to do some alt tabbing and then I have to sit here and do this and cycle through stuff to figure out which window I want open. Okay, and then, or there's there's some other things like, uh, of course, in the GNOME shell, you can go up and by default in the upper right hand corner, will pull up a bunch of things. Very much like the Mac functionality and it's going to stack all your windows on top of each other. Um, much like this, and now I have to select which window is the one that I want out of this group, that adds a lot of extra time versus having everything on a taskbar down at the bottom, I can quickly jump back and forth. That's why I do not care for this type of methodology. So while it's great we do have this dock optionality, it's not exactly the type of thing that I actually want. So let's go ahead and get rid of that thing um, because that panel at the top is, is annoying. Again, this is subjective. You might work really well in this platform, but stop saying it's the best. Stop saying it's better. Stop saying it's more modern because modern doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Just because it's modern doesn't mean we necessarily want to use it. We want to use things that help us in our daily production. If that helps you in your daily production, good for you. I love the fact that on Linux, I can still go back on a modern operating system like this and have a taskbar. So I set up Cairo Doc. And what I can do on this is each instance I click on this, it is going to load up a new instance of Firefox. So now I have now restored the view that I want. Um, of course, this Cairo Doc theme does not have all of the icons the same. I can eventually build those. Eventually, perhaps I will build them. Um, I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, like I said, I, I don't have a ton of time today to work on building a desktop. But you can see I added a Cairo Doc. And then what you needed to do is um, it actually did not automatically start. So I had to come down here, hit auto start. Why is Skype there? Uh, I uninstalled Skype. Um, so here it will actually, I just came up here, added it to the, to the dock. So now it will auto start. And then I added all of the software packages that I really wanted on a regular basis. So I have a weather application here. I can click on this, get a forecast. So I can kind of get a little bit better view what's going on. And then I have my folders and I'll eventually probably move this around a little bit. You'll see I did add some nice transparency, some nice um, flickering effects. I kind of have this set up very much like my um, uh, Debian uh, KDE system. Um, now what you'll notice down here is that I do still have that dock-like uh, task window down here at the bottom which just adds a new instance for each one of these I have open. This is absolutely annoying to me so I'm going to get rid of it here when we're done. Actually maybe I'll just go ahead and get rid of it now while we're doing this on the video. <clears throat> so what I am actually liking about this is um, uh, it, it does give me a lot of this, like, it gives me some of that, that modern GNOME feel without actually giving me, um, uh, without actually giving me the, the solid rigidness. I can customize this a lot more without a lot of extra extensions. I realize there's extension, extensions to do all that. Um, out of the box, it seems to play video fine. It seems to play music fine. I tested that on Kodi. Um, as I, you know, kind of booted up Kodi here, I connected all my network shares so that everything's going to work. And the cool thing about this is it worked without me having to install Samba or any other things. And that's actually what I had to do on the Linux Mint KDE is I had to actually install a lot of extra things, edit the FSTAB system to get it to work. This one seems to be working without having to do all that. Um, I installed multiple different browsers. Uh, I have Firefox, Chromium, uh, Midori, which is what I'm going to be using for um, my uh, my cooking and Christian channel YouTube accounts. I use 
Chromium for my main Switch to Linux YouTube account, and I'm using uh, Firefox for my general web stuff. It connects to network shares just fine. So if I uh, come in here, I can actually come down and just manually enter the server address down here. So I can do that. That seems to be working. Of course, I'm not having any problem at all um, recording the video with a simple screen recorder. Um, and then, let's see, so here's my other options here. Um, of course, I can very easily it just crash my video again. Now my video does keep crashing. Um, over here, I can very easily uh, determine what is using my input, my output. This is actually a breath of fresh air considering what I've had to do with KDE to actually get that to work. Let's go ahead and see if I can get my camera back up. <clears throat> As far as uh, stability is concerned, um, it seems like it slows down to a crawl at times. Um, there are times where it's like, uh, uh, particularly if it's doing system updates and whatever else, the system really becomes un unusable for the period of time it's doing updates, uh, which is something I haven't experienced on, on Mint or Ubuntu or other systems like that. You know, a lot of other Linux distros I've used as I'm attempting to run updates, I really don't even notice it's running updates in the background. On this system here, when it's time to run updates, you got to run updates and stop for a while uh, while it gets going. Um, I like the menu functionality. Of course, this is essentially the same uh, menu that you have available on uh, on GNOME. So um, let's see, and let's see what the programs they have installed. Um, I'll tell you the things that I have installed myself. Um, Steam does come pre-installed. I don't use Steam, so. Um, I don't know if it actually works or not. Let's go ahead and, well, of course, crash my video again. <clears throat> well, maybe Steam doesn't work. Eh, we'll just leave my video down, down there for now. Hopefully, we're still recording video. Well, it, still, it still says it's going well. All right, um, so apparently it should have Steam there, but Steam does not seem to be loading for me. Uh, if it does or doesn't work, if you happen to know, let me know in the comments below. Um, I don't play games, so I don't know for sure. Uh, let's see, there's an SSH server browser. I installed Chromium. I installed Midori. I did install Evolution. I think it's under Office. Um, so I'll probably set that up for email. I may or may not, I don't know. I did install Kodi, um, GUVC View, uh, which keeps crashing on me. I installed OBS. I installed Rhythmbox, Simple Screen Recorder, which is what we're using to record these on. I did install the print drivers from um, from AUR. If sorry, if there is a, a better way of saying that, um, I'm still learning the Manjaro and uh, Archie type systems. Um, I of course I installed Cairo Doc. I think that's all I installed. Let's see. All right, so let's have a look at our system resources right now. Of course, we are recording video, so keep that in mind. So it looks like CPUs are running a little bit higher. It's still only running on two gigs of RAM. There's six available in this particular computer. So I'm guessing that the high video CPU probably has to do with the fact that we're recording, especially since I did the same same exact setup on the Fitbit or other Fitlet on the Fitlet computer, and it did kind of push the CPUs pretty high. So um, I'm guessing that a lot of that has to do with uh, the fact that we're recording video here. Uh, of course, yeah, it's, uh, it's Steam desktop's still there. All right, um, I haven't played around with other things. Um, let's see, I have a DVD over here. Let's see if it plays DVDs. That was something I could not get done in Ubuntu. Uh, View.yahoo.com, which is where I get uh, free television programming. Uh, that does work right out of the box. Didn't have to do anything. I did enable DRM in Firefox, of course. Um, so that does work. Of course, I played some YouTube videos. That does work. Um, usually, I have had problems playing DVDs on Kodi. I'm going to try it in VLC because that's usually what I use to play DVDs. Okay, so yeah, we're installing, we're playing Leverage here. Let's see if Leverage plays. Yep, all right, let's stop that so I don't get any copyright strikes. <laughs> okay, um, so that does seem to work. Let's see if uh, Cody actually, let's see if it can uh, play a disc here. This is the thing that usually freezes on me. Um, on, hi, look at that. Cool. I can play discs on, uh, on Cody now, that's sweet. All right, um, so it actually works better than my Linux Mint system where I cannot play DVDs on Kodi. Um, 
So that's cool. So everything else here seems to be working pretty good. Um, uh, out of the box. Um, oh, we'll see. We'll see what happens here. Of course, I still need to test this for a little bit, and uh, probably in a few weeks, I'll give you an update. Um, uh, I'll probably fix the uh, themes, uh, icon themes over here. Make sure all those are uh, looking nice and consistent, and then uh, what we'll do from there is we'll just go ahead and. Um, uh, I'll let you know how things are going. And uh, with that, um, this is the Manjaro setup we have. Uh, of course, I added some transparency to the panel down here. Um, make that look a little bit nicer, which you'd probably see better if I had a different image up here on the background. Um, it seems as though if I go into Chromium, I'm getting, um, you know, I'm, I of course, I haven't logged out since I've logged into you. No, I did. Yeah, so Chromium is remembering my passwords. That's something I had a problem with on uh, Ubuntu um, without any problems. So, and, you know, terminal works. Everything else seems to work fine. So let's give this thing uh, a little bit of try. And uh, I'll let you know, guys know in a few weeks how I'm liking Manjaro. Again, this is going to be my media PC, which kind of just plays files. It does auxiliary things. I'll uh, answer YouTube comments from here and, um, you know, a few other miscellaneous things and random Internet searches. That's kind of what this computer gets used for. So I'll let you know how it goes. Um, uh, in uh, in due time. So thanks for watching. If you'd like to help support what we do at Switch to Linux, check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.